uniform Mike uniform. I got that uniform Mike uniform. What's the front of that? I got that uniform Mike uniform. What's the front of that? Uh, kilowatt Delta 4. Uniform Mike Uniform, Roger. What's the name there? Uniform Mike Uniform, Roger. What's the name there? Uh, name here is Dan, Delta Alpha, November. Little town called Shepherdsville. Uh, just run on the north side of Fort Knox. Uh, good evening. That's uh, Kentucky, Roger. That's uh, Kentucky, Roger. Uh, that is correct. Roger, Dan, and uh, what uh, radio are you running? Roger, Dan, and uh, what uh, radio are you running? Uh, it's a 23K, and uh, I'm going to run out to a double bazooka up at about maybe 20. Uh, what was the name there? What was the call? Ah, the call is uh, Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor. We're up around Louisville in uh Gosh, uh, you just, I just went to my local antenna and you're about to blow me away. So, what was that radio again? Oh, it's the uh, Flex 3000. Flex 3000. We picked it up. Uh, yeah, about the time they stopped, uh, they stopped selling it uh, over at, uh, at Flex there. So, I had to go on and uh, pick one up from uh, uh, their QTH. And... Uh, uh, picked it up and got rid of my uh, TS-2000 and uh, went to completely the other direction and picked up uh, uh, picked up a Viking Valiant uh, to go along with my Hamlin HQ-150. Roger, Roger there, uh, Dan. And uh, if you're interested in a setup, uh, the first thing would be to be sure that you're in that wide transmit bandwidth 100 to 2900 that will allow that transmitter to perform its maximum capabilities and then give you just a slice of daylight before you're into somebody else's conversation so the numbers are 100 to 2900 on your TBW your transmit bandwidth Roger Oh Roger on that yeah I had it set at uh, 50 on the low side so uh, went ahead and uh, uh, put it up to 100 there I don't know if that uh, made any difference or not uh, what do you think Yes, sir. It's a little bit cleaner now. The top end uh, is that at twenty nine hundred. Uh, we're at twenty nine point nine, and let me uh, reduce that down to exactly uh, twenty nine hundred. Uh, that's where we're set now. So you're running now one hundred to twenty nine hundred. Uh, that is correct. Great, and then uh, to your compressor processor. Uh, and we, uh, do you have, uh, how, what kind of uh, compressor processor uh, do you have? How is it labeled? Uh, actually, uh, running zero equalization at all. Uh, just, just running just straight mic gain. And uh, I've got the mic gain set at about 25. And uh, everything else is uh, turned off. DX, expander, uh, down expander, all of that is uh, off. Roger, we suggest that you run, do run a little bit of compression, but only slightly, like a 3 out of 10 or 30 out of 100, uh, just a third of the uh, compressor possibilities, 3 out of 10 or 30 out of 100, Roger. Okay, well, that's, uh, that's set it uh, right at 3 uh, at, at that point right there, so, uh, uh, which I'm assuming is the uh, DX selection, correct? Uh, I'm not sure. Does that go to 100 or does that just go to 10 on your uh, compressor? Uh, that was up to 10 and it's set at 3 right now. Excellent, excellent. And then I, I know that you uh, have a kind of a different uh, uh, um, ALC, but we're looking to be running uh, to the right of mid scale on your ALC meter as you say the word audio and adjust your mic level. So it's uh, when you say the word audio, you become a human test generator. We stretch out the front of that audio and adjust your mic gain until your ALC indicator is running uh, at least two thirds, Roger. Okay, and uh, well, this one uh, they recommended setting it up to, to not clip uh, zero, and uh, just on normal uh, regular voice peaks is probably uh, at negative uh, two or three somewhere in that area. 
and sometimes it is uh, peaking and hitting at uh, zero and above, and uh, that's about uh, two-thirds scale. Yes, sir. That really sounded good there. Nice and full. So what I would suggest is that you leave your ALC meter out and be looking at your ALC meter as you talk to your buddies around the country and across the nation and uh, try to keep that meter right in the sweet spot by your voice control. You know, uh, however you need to do it, maybe you need to bring your mic gain up just a little bit or down just a little bit, but you want to be right there in that sweet spot as as much as you can be, Roger? Yeah, Roger, on that. And what I have found out on this end, uh, I've, I've, I've got an amplifier over here, and of course I'm not running it right now, I'm just, uh, just a 100 watt output. But uh, anyway, uh, with the uh, with the blower uh, running on the amplifier, it's uh, it's really noticeable when I go above uh, 25 percent on the audio gain. So, um, I mean, you know, I can crank the gain up over here, and let's see, uh, this is uh, this is right at 30. But when I run 30, the uh, uh, the audio in the uh, in the amplifier there with the uh, the blower is uh, quite pronounced. Roger, so you have a couple of options. Maybe move your uh, your PA uh, downstream a little bit, uh, uh, you know, just a little bit further away, acoustically away from from your mic, or turn your mic uh, to the to the uh, your the back of your mic to the uh, uh, PA, so it uh, you know is less likely to to uh, pick it up. Roger, Roger. Yep, yep. I agree with you. I agree with you. And uh, what I found out is, uh, well, the room is kind of small here, so uh, I think the uh, the sound is uh, bouncing off the walls and everything else. So uh, no matter where I turned it, it was it was still there, and I could actually see it on the pan adapter, um, uh, but uh, I, I don't see it at the 25 uh, percent mark. Roger. And the other option is uh, uh, the tighter mic you work. Uh, the better signal to noise you get. So the the closer you get to your microphone, the less ambient noise is going to get in there with you. Uh, and but the thing is, if you do uh, work to really tight mic, then you uh, definitely want to get a foam windscreen uh, to put over that mic, uh, so you can work it close uh, without uh, any uh, plosives or uh, you know articulation difficulties, uh, breathing and stuff like that. Okay, yep, know exactly what you mean. I do have one of those on there uh, as we speak. And uh, the mic I'm running uh, with the uh, rig today is the uh, it's the PR-22 utility mic made by Heil. Um, I actually got to speak to uh, Bob Heil uh, years back, and he was running one of these mics, and I thought he just sounded fantastic. And, and that was his uh, the thing that he was talking about was that uh, he, he was running no uh, equalization. And uh, at the time, he wanted to know what I was running. And uh, at, back then, I was running the Shure 522 with heavy, heavy equalization to uh, kind of uh, smooth out the, uh, the heavy bass that, that that mic had and, and bring up the mids and the highs. But uh, didn't have to do that with this microphone. Roger, Roger. I'm looking at your uh, audio curve on a spectrum analyzer and just is from wall to wall you probably have activity down to about uh, 50 cycles or so and uh, top end up to around uh, three or so Roger okay sounds very good sounds very good All right Jim well uh, I do appreciate it and um, oh uh, and by the way I have heard you several times on repeaters um, uh, what is that uh, uh, bicycle mobile for exercise? Uh, yes, sir. That was a few years ago. I haven't done that for quite a while. Uh, I've uh, sought uh, safety in, instead of that lately, Roger. <laughs> yeah, very good, very good. Well, uh, uh, you know, I had uh, I had the two meter four forty in the vehicle at the time, but um, and uh, running up and down the Interstate sixty five between Shepherdsville and up to Louisville, and uh, would uh, occasionally hear you on there, but. Um, uh, you know, usually I do not mess with the radio while I'm driving. Uh, the Interstate 65 is bad enough uh, without the, the distraction of a radio. Roger, I had a, a really good uh, antenna on that bicycle mobile. It was a high gain antenna. I forget how many, I think it was 5 dB gain 
on uh, on uh, VHF and uh, about 90 began on uh, UHF. So I could pick up about uh, 18 repeaters as I went around the uh, there's a, a uh, a pond down in the park, and we just do. Uh, it had a uh, a walkway around that. We, we'd be just riding on the on the walkway, Roger. <laughs> yeah, very good. Uh, sounds good. Sounds good. All right, Jim. Well, uh, the wife had just brought me uh, or uh, come in and told me to uh, eat my dinner. So uh, I'm going to say uh, 73. And thanks for the audio check. And uh, uh, we've got her. Uh, we've got her uh, nailed down on this end. And uh, let's see, down expander was actuated, so uh, I've, I've eliminated the down expander. So I don't know where how that got clicked on, but you know how it is, clicking buttons over here. All right, Jim, uh, 73, take care, and good to hear you on the band. A KT9 VKV from KD4UMU. Roger, Roger, Dan, 73, sir, good to hear you. And again, if you want to hear that audio, if you go to YouTube, do a call letter search for KC9VKV followed by the word logbook. That'll take you to this recording. I'll have it uploaded by noon tomorrow. So, uh, 73, and have a great afternoon, beautiful weekend. And with that being said, we got to get out of here ourselves. Uh, since uh, 3.30, we've been uh, broadcasting, and uh, gosh, if you had participated, uh, have participated, and want to hear your audio, if you go to YouTube and do that call letter search, KC9VKV, followed by the word logbook, it'll take you to this recording, cut number one in a series of 3200, and I'll have it uploaded by noon tomorrow. And all that being said, we got to get out of here and return this frequency back to normal amateur radio use. This is KC9VKV, clear.